Morning, how's everybody doing? I want to take a moment and uh, sort of help you understand how I set up my day. And I had the opportunity to be taught this by several coaches along the way who uh, I like to, whenever I work with a new coach or mentor, I like for them to tell me how they work best, quite frankly, because you're paying them all this money um, to help you. And so it's best to learn from them. And so I, I have the ability to be coached by some amazing people um, that have helped some of the biggest athletes in the world, as well as helped some billionaires in the world that do building construction, manage massive teams around the world globally. And how do you decide as a leader or an owner, how do you decide what to work on when you literally own 67 different companies, right? And so, um, it's crazy. The last guy that I worked for that had, he literally has 67 companies. He, uh, some of his companies are literally sue each other because they work with each other and maybe somebody doesn't meet a contract. And so they have a in between and rather than him step in and do it, he has learned that there's certain things that he can manage and the other things he just needs to trust his team and step out of the way. And so, uh, it's proper and they do he does the best to not blur the lines. And so, um, I asked him once, I said, so how do you get so much, how do you decide to get so much done? How, how do you decide to do all these things? And so what he told me is he said, first off, Aaron, I need you to work with a couple of coaches and you go find whoever you want, but you need to find coaches that go over this thing called a map. And if you do a map, you'll be able to manage a lot. Okay. So I'm going to go over what the map is. I do this every single week so I can decide what I'm going to get done that week. All right. So a map. So you want to draw a line or you want to get a big piece of paper like this and you can just use a notebook. I'm just using this so everybody can see. So then you want to draw a line like this, a line like this. So it looks like it basically looks just like a pie sign. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to, so this is your map and it stands for massive what's weird is I'm actually lefty, so this is weird right, drawing like this, but maybe I can do ambidextrous. So, anyways, it's a massive action plan. Okay? So, then over here and over here, we're going to do stuff. But basically, this is what we, he says. Okay, so what's the number one thing right now that you have that is taking up your time? that is just a big annoyance right and so yesterday and i love my wife to death but yesterday the biggest annoyance i had is she needed to get a car tire fixed that kept having air and so car tire was like my number one thing right of all the things that i do car tire was my number one thing and it has been for like multiple weeks and if i got my car tire done what type of time would that free up so that i could do something else right so right now I'm going to get rid of that because that's done. So my biggest thing right now, what's my number one biggest thing that if I did it right now, I could free up all the rest of my time. Okay. Number one. Okay. Number one is actually a loan origination for our portfolio. So people asking us for money, loan origination, number one. Okay. After loan origination, what's number two? Number two is supply chain. with uh, US Drayage, or one of our groups. Okay, so if I got the loan origination done, what? how much extra time would that free up from my schedule every week if everybody that tried to come to us and ask us, hey, would I buy this company or would I would invest in this or would I do that? If I could literally send them to our loan origination group that's in house and say, hey, um, so-and-so wants us to come in and buy a company, they want to be the operator of that company and they need our finance to help them. Can you do the due diligence process? If I had this taken care of, how much time every week would that free up in my schedule? And so I'm just going to put an estimation up here of how much time that would free up. And it's probably really close to 12 hours is what I probably book for it, right? Now, if I got this done and that team was able to work on just that process and it smooths, it'd probably take my 12 hours. Of, of due diligence and process, it'd probably take it down to maybe two hours total and 10 hours will go in there and that team gets paid and my operator gets paid and everything else makes sense. So loan origination, probably number one for me. Okay. 
then that takes that frees up 10 extra hours. Now, if I had 10 extra hours, what would I use to work on the 10 hours? What would I do? Well, right now, supply chains is probably number two for me. So if supply chain is number two and I have 10 extra hours, well, how many hours right now do I probably work on it? I probably only work on it like four hours, right? Now, let's say that I could get rid of that in my life and, and now that big pain in my life uh, so of loan origination and supply chains, what would be next? What would I use all the extra time for to work on next after that? Well, it would probably be, it would probably be infrastructure and specifically this would be CRE. So commercial real estate for storage and distribution. Okay. That's probably what would be my next biggest pain. Okay. Then after that one, what would be my next biggest pain? After that one, what would be my next biggest pain? Right. And so literally I just go through all the way down through these until I find, okay, if I, if I did all of these, then how much time would it free up all the way to the bottom? Right. And if I did all that next, what you got to do, okay. Is you got to go and you say, okay, let's say that you, let's say that you got this loan origination done what would that free up? Okay. And so this is, this is what's give this is called give in my massive action plan. Okay. Give. And so, and then this right here, so here's the action of the plan, right? So this is the give what I get. And then this over here would be the, uh, pain. So this, this is what this gives me. And here's the thing is I'm not vote. I'm, I'm not motivated by what gives me, I'm, I'm telling you that does not motivate me. What motivates me is the pain of me not getting these things done. What could happen, right? Literally. Now I'm going to be, I'm going to be as honest as can be honest in what the pain creates for me, because I want you to be honest to you. And here's literally what it means to me. And it's my biggest fear. And here's the thing is by me being honest and putting it out there, guess what? It's only going to amplify that fear and that pain. And it's very real. And so let's say, what's my biggest pain? That's what motivates me. But what's my biggest give? Okay. Here's why the give doesn't motivate me. So let's say that I'm able to work with this loan origination team. I get them up and running and it's smooth and clean. What does it give me? Well, it gives me more money. Okay. Makes my processes easier. I think that's a great give easier, more money. The other thing it gives me more than likely is it gives me my network to go out and refer me more often because I can come, I can go use all of my network of people that want to give our thesis money and our loan origination team protects them in the due diligence process. And then it brings in more business because we're funding more things than anybody else because we have a bigger network and a bigger knowledge, right? So it gives me more people that referred in, which then guess what? Gives me more money and it makes things easier. But if I don't have this in place, guess what it, it guess what it does? Okay. Which is also my biggest pain. If I don't have all this in process that everybody that's in all of my beginners club groups or whatever, instead what happens is it makes us look like a flake. It makes our company look like we never, we never do anything. This is harder on me than this is. So this motivates me, but some people, this motivates them. And that's why you have to do both in this process. Make sense. Okay. So this right here, if you're a leader and you get out of the weeds, okay, you're going to hire an operator that does this. You're then going to create a report and a process to follow up to make sure they're doing this. And then you're going to help them. Yesterday, my operator reached out to me and they said, Hey, Aaron, so, um, we, in, in getting all this set up for you, what is the process for underwriting and everything else? Who underwrites it? We underwrite it. We underwrite our thesis. And then we decide from the capital uh, pieces that come in, which portions of what's been underwritten qualifies for which group. That's what we decided. And so we decide the underwriting. And so we need to be able to step in, help them work through processes and obstacles, and then get it to the next point. Make sense. Okay. So now let's say this is now done. This, this literally, this piece is done. Go down to supply chains. Okay. What do I get? If I, if I, if I fix my supply chain and it's beautiful and amazing. Okay. Oddly enough, I get more money again. I also get more opportunities to do more deals with big suppliers 
like GM Asia, Sani, the third largest uh, distributor for heavy equipment in the world, like just different groups like this, tons of them, okay? So many you couldn't even imagine that want to work with us because our systems are. So this is what I get, okay? To me, that, that that get also is notoriety. I get notoriety, and this one, don't get me wrong, this one does get to me when I go places sometimes, so notoriety, people know who I am, okay? What, what happens, though, if I don't get it, okay? What happens if I don't get it? Well, if I don't get it, then we spin our wheels. I hate spinning wheels and not getting paid. I hate it, okay? If we don't get our supply chains in place, then uh, all the hard work's wasted. Wasted work. If we don't get our supply chains in place, then all the money that we take to do all of our deals defaults. So money defaults. Huge pain. It's such a big pain when money defaults that you can get sued. Like literally, you created a thesis to return an investment, and if you don't do what you're supposed to, you can get sued. And that's definitely a big pain. Make sense? Okay. Infrastructure CRE, storage distribution. Okay. So uh, get here is I get more real estate, more net worth, real estate, net worth, larger portfolio, okay, over here, if I don't do the, or if I don't do this, what's the pain of infrastructure? Well, pain of infrastructure, hmm, that's a hard one. What's the pain of infrastructure? If I don't, if I don't um, get to doing that, what's pain of infrastructure? Pain of infrastructure is probably, so um, the supply chains in supply move up and down. An infrastructure like real estate has stayed consistent for like as many years as you can look back, real estate stayed consistent. And so I think what my pain would be if I don't get into infrastructure, would be uh, unbalanced portfolio, unbalanced portfolio. And to have an unbalanced portfolio, literally just, it literally just stressful. So stress through the roof, okay? But that stress is probably not gonna, like I do well with stress, so that's probably not gonna be, be great, but if stress is through the roof, like through the roof, then I could have a heart attack, I could go insane, <laughs> you know, I could uh, literally just, I mean, all this stuff. And this is definitely more painful for me because I want to see my kids grow up, right? I want to see all of that side. So this whole structure, like literally you need to go through this. And then after you go through this and you come down, and, and when I did this with my, uh, my leaders and my trainers that helped me along the way, it would be pages, like down a wall, pages of stuff. Just tons and tons of stuff. And then they'd say, okay, Aaron, now what I want you to do at the very end is I want you to, number one, we're going to circle that. Actually, take that big red marker and whatever that big one is, you're going to circle it. This is like what you get. If, if you get there, this is what you get. This is all your free time. This is your ability to sit on beaches around the world. This is your bit, ability to go mentor people like you love doing. This is all these things because you're free up all the other time. You've got the right teams in place, the right people in place, everything else. You're free up everything. And so this is what you get. This is your apex. And this is what we need to drive to every single day. And if we don't get your apex, this ability for you to do everything, help more people, everything else, manage your teams, your processes, all that stuff. If we don't get to that apex, then what's the big uh, a, a gain that we miss out on? And what's the big problem? And here's what the big problem was for me that really hit home. If I don't go out and help the world, put the world into balance of blockchain, supply blockchain like this, and make it easy, reports, feedback, everything else, turn cycles, all that stuff. If I don't make this super easy for everybody, the biggest pain was this, is, is my kids will grow up in a, in a world where people are just so confused. There's people inventing things all over that don't need things like supply chains work together, space works together, everything else. If you can get people to cohesion and if all that doesn't happen, like there could be wars that happen because people don't understand the simple means of supply and my, my family ultimately could starve. And so it has to be that big of a thing for you as you drive to exactly what it is you're going to work on. Now, once you've worked all this out, you put it all up on the wall, 
Then you get out your second most important tool that I think everybody needs. And that second most important tool, that second most important tool, hopefully my computer's still up and running. Jeez. That second most important tool that everybody needs is a yellow pad. And you literally take numbers from this list and you write them out. And then that's what you end up, uh, that's what you end up having be your, your work list to work through. So anyways, I hope everybody gets some uh, gain off of this. Do your massive action plans every single week and they'll set your week and then just work through the processes. Find operators for your biggest needs of your companies and, uh, and then set up report process, train, love, and it's your job to clap your hands. That's really what your job is. Everybody have a good one.